The Phoenix Suns are a very confusing team and I don't know how to diagnose them. Gentlemen, the NBA season starts in less than a week and I am very excited for the season to finally begin, man. Now, in the last video, we talked about the Boston Celtics and how I feel like they're a very fraudulent team. But in this video, I want to talk about another team that I really don't know how to talk about them. The Suns, in my opinion, are a team that are either going to win the NBA Finals or get bounced out the first round. I don't think there's an in-between with this team. Now, this offseason was very eventful and there were a lot of changes made to the team. I mean, I can only think of like one to two guys that were on this team that were on teams the years before. I mean, they completely revamped the entire roster and maybe it was for the best. I think of course we have to start with the Bradley Beal trade. I feel like this was a trade that a lot of people had mixed reactions about, but a lot of people said, oh, the Suns, they, they got robbed. This was such a bad trade for them, which I don't think anyone genuinely thought. I think they just thought that maybe the Suns were overpaying for Bradley Beal and that he had too much value on him. And by that, I mean, it's contract. I do think Bradley Beal has a big contract and I don't think he's worth all that money. However, I still think getting Bradley Beal was one of the best moves the Suns could have made. And all they had to give up was Chris Paul, who was someone on a very big contract that also happened just to be aging. And they also got rid of Landry Shamit, which is the equivalent of getting rid of Adolf Hill. The point I'm trying to make is that Phoenix did not give up much for this trade, yet they got back better value. And I, I think Bradley Beal is still going to be a great player for this team. I understand he's not going to average 25 points, but he's the third option on this team. Of course he's not. But hell, Bradley Beal is a third option. I don't think that's too bad if I'm just being honest with you. But the thing is, I know you know this. Everybody knows having Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker as your offensive weapons is not too bad. Hell, even if I talk about the depth we got, like Eric Gordon, which how did we get Eric Gordon for that cheap? Utah Watanabe, Drew Eubanks, all the other guys that Phoenix got on the bench, we know they can score. But the biggest reason why people are confused about this team is the defensive side of the ball. Again, I will reiterate this. Everyone knows Phoenix is going to score a lot of points. They might even have a top three offense in the NBA. But when it comes to the defensive side of the ball, there are many questions that we have to ask, and I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can in this video. So let's start with a very basic question. Who the hell in Phoenix's starting lineup is going to be a solid defensive player? Who is going to get the best defensive matchup for this team? Obviously, I think Devin Booker is a solid start. I think Booker is a great on-ball defender and is gotten better over the past couple years. I remember he used to get this label of, oh, he's just someone with empty stats and all he can do is score. He can't play defense. And maybe that was the case when he was a young guard on a team that was not competing and honestly was just doing YMCA runs. But ever since the Phoenix Suns started to contend, I feel like that narrative has started to go away, at least with people that actually know ball. Devin Booker is a good defender. He is someone that can lock up your best player. Now, he's not Kawhi Leonard, but I mean, hey, he's doing pretty well. However, similar to Kawhi Leonard, I do think because Booker is the undisputed number one option on this team, his defensive presence is going to go down. It is very hard to be the best scorer and best defender on your team, and I'm just going to be honest, I wouldn't want to live in a world where Booker is our best defender, because you want other guys to do that job. I think at the height of his career, Kevin Durant was a great rim protector, he was a great perimeter defender overall, but honestly, I just don't think that's going to be the case anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong, a couple seasons ago, he had a pretty good defensive year. I do feel like though because of his Achilles injuries, also the fact that he's starting to age, I just feel like Kevin Durant is not going to be the best defender this season. I think he'll be able to lock up every now and then, but I'm not trusting him to stop the other team's forwards. But I feel like these are the most two popular examples you're going to get when someone says, oh, what about the Phoenix Suns defense? Let's talk about some people that I feel like are not going to be mentioned. Bradley Beal, for one, has never been the best defensive player on his team, and I don't expect him to be. But I need you to understand that, like I said earlier, Bradley Beal is not going to be the number one option nor the number two. His role in Phoenix is not going to be the same as Washington, and I do think he's going to be able to put more effort on the defensive side of the ball, which I think is way better because he doesn't have to average 25, 30 points for us to win. Mans could easily get a light 20 per game, and I think he's going to be just fine. So because he doesn't have as much pressure on the offensive side, I think he can take that effort and take it to the defensive side of the ball. But someone that is proven that we've seen play good on the defensive side is Josh Kogi. Last year, Josh Kogi was the point of attack defender for Phoenix, and I need to point out the fact that they were a top seven defense in the NBA. And some would argue one of the reasons why they were up there is because of the original anchor of this defense, DeAndre Ayton. And honestly, I think I would have loved to see DeAndre Ayton play on this new defensive team. Because for one, like I've said, the personnel is very different. But number two, the head coach is Frank Vogel, who is a very defensive minded coach. He is someone who I believe is going to work harder on the defensive side because on offense, there's not much he can really do. You have 
three guys that are absolutely amazing at scoring. I think offense is just going to be a given, but I do think Phoenix's biggest struggle is going to be defense, which I feel like is the main topic of this video. But look, we already know that DeAndre Ayton is no longer the anchor. That role is going to go to Yusuf Nurkic. Now, when we look at talent, I do believe DeAndre Ayton is a lot more talented compared to Yusuf Nurkic. However, there is something in Nurkic's game that DeAndre Ayton seems to lack, and it's this thing called effort. He actually gives a fuck, unlike DA. Now, maybe DA didn't lose the love of the game for basketball, but on Phoenix, he definitely did. And you can tell right now, DeAndre Ayton is acting like my ex girlfriend, and by that, I mean he's being a bit. No, seriously, this is petty. Th this shit is tragic. Just like the fact that you're not subscribed to this video. Why, why are you not subscribed, my boy? Okay, but real talk, I do like Yusuf Nurkic as the anchor on this team. I do think he's not going to be as good as DA was, but I just want to see some effort, man. It it's such a low standard, but if we get effort from Yusuf Nurkic, I think we're going to be just fine. And the crazy thing is, I think a lot of people just assume Yusuf Nurkic is a bad defender. I'm not going to lie, though. Statistically, he is an above average defender, especially when it comes to being a quality rim protector, which is something that Phoenix is desperately going to need. I do think his biggest issue is missing games, but I'm not going to lie. I think we're going to see something different this year with Nurkic. Also, after doing some research and going over the past couple seasons, I think it's kind of interesting to see that Nurkic has just been pulled out of a lot of games just because the team was bad. That might be a stretch, but I do think the only way to tell is how the season goes. Also, some Blazers fans are blaming the reason why Nurkic got worse was because of Chauncey Billups and the way he was utilizing Nurkic. The problem with Chauncey Billups as a coach is he wanted Yusuf Nurkic to play more perimeter than in the paint. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Yusuf Nurkic is not the best perimeter defender. And I do think Frank Vogel is going to realize this and he's going to use him in the paint a lot more. Because when Nurkic was playing in the paint, he was a great rim protector. I, I just don't think it makes any sense why people are saying he's a bad defender. I get it though, it's the Blazers. No one really pays attention to this team. I mean, maybe this year because they got nothing but aura. Like, damn, Scoot, you ain't gotta look like the. <laughs> But seriously, I think Nurkic is going to have a lot of eyes on him, and I do think he's going to be a solid anchor for this defensive team. Now, on the bench, there's not a whole lot I want to say. I do think some of the guys are solid defenders, but it's not enough to talk about. Because something else we need to talk about is injuries. It seems like the Phoenix Suns have a very injury-riddled team. It only takes a couple things to destroy this entire thing. Now, I literally just spent like two minutes talking about Yusuf Nurkic, but again, I don't really think that's the case for him. Kevin Durant is old as fuck, and I still think he's going to deal with some injuries. But other than that, I'm not really convinced. I think the reason why Devin Booker got injured last year in the playoffs was because the Suns were overusing him. I mean, for fuck's sake, this guy was on an absolute run and it felt like he was doing damn near everything by himself. Bradley Beal, I think you could have the same argument. And I think Josh Jacoby is going to be the fifth starter. So yeah, there's not much on him. And as far as the bench, again, I just don't think there's anyone that's really been dealing with injury history that I can think of on the top of my head. Suspects, so what's the verdict of this team? Are they champions? Champions, are they frauds? What do you think? And honestly, I think it's still kind of hard to diagnose them. I will say, after doing my research within the video and going over some stuff, I'm a lot more confident in this season than I was before. However, I need to see more. Sure, the Suns did well in the preseason, but who gives a fuck about preseason? Definitely not me. But look, I'm excited to see this team play, and most importantly, I just want to see some good basketball, man. I think Phoenix is going to have a great year, but most importantly, I think this is going to be a very pivotal year. Matt Ishbia made a lot of moves and completely rebranded the entire team. What happens this year is going to be very interesting and I think a lot of people are going to question whether or not Matt Ishbia is a good owner. Also, a lot of legacy conversations are going to happen. For example, about Devin Booker. I mean, some people don't even think he's a top 10 player anymore, which he most certainly is. Kevin Durant is starting to age and people are questioning whether or not he can help a team win. Bradley Beal, I feel like most people are starting to underrate him and I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong. And Bull Bull, man, I'm excited for this Bull Bull MVP run, baby. All jokes aside, if you want to see me talk about the Phoenix Suns more, you got to check out the Starting Five podcast where we drop episodes every single Friday. Gentlemen, this Friday, we have a very special guest. And since you made it to the end of the video, I thought I'd announce it. We're bringing on Young Mustard. Young Condiment is coming on to our podcast, baby. We're going to ask him a lot of questions, and I think it's going to be an episode you guys are genuinely going to enjoy. It drops Friday. Make sure y'all boys check it out and subscribe to the channel. We put 
put out some great content over there. But if you're already subscribed to the starting five, first of all, W, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dap you up real quick. But also, if you guys did not see the last video where we talked about how the Boston Celtics are frauds, you better check that video out right now. And shit, if you already did both those things, man, let me dap you up once again, my boy. You a real homie. You a goat. I appreciate you, my boy. But yeah, man, the two videos are on the screen right here. Go check both of them out if you haven't already.